بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رشف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله So in today's reminder I think today will probably be our final reminder um, because tomorrow we have Islamic Relief coming uh, and then we don't know what's happening on Monday um, it could be Eid on Tuesday who knows Allah A'lam and I was thinking about what to talk, what to reflect on today. And uh, I was looking at the different surahs that um, the sheikhs are going to recite. And what caught my eye was Surah Al-Jum'ah, which Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar recited in the first rak'ah. In Surah Al-Jum'ah, SubhanAllah, there's, um, of course, many ayat that you can reflect on. But the one ayat that caught my eye is where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he says, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You know this verse, the first time I actually re recall coming across this verse is in 2006 when I was in Egypt. In 2006 I went to Egypt to learn Arabic. At that time I didn't know anything. And I was maybe the first few weeks there, just trying to get to grips with, with what was going on. And um, I didn't, as I said, I didn't understand any Arabic. But there was a clip that was going around of a young boy called Firdaus. If I can request the brothers to shh, shh, shh. Um, There was a young boy called Firdaus. This boy, he was I think 17 or 18 years old from East London. He was in Egypt studying. And there was a clip where he's reciting Surah Al-Jum'ah to his teacher. And he comes across this ayah. And he repeats this ayah and he's repeating this ayah and he keeps crying. At that time I didn't understand the ayah. I didn't know any Arabic. So I'm thinking, why is he crying? So this clip that was sent around to different students. And then I looked at the translation of the ayah. And what's the translation of the ayah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what? قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ You know that death that you're fleeing from? That you're trying to... And he escape. فَإِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقِيكُمْ That is going to catch up with you one day. Indeed, there's no doubt about it that that death that you're trying to flee from, you're trying to forget about, you're trying to escape, one day it's going to catch up with you. Yes, one day that, that time is going to, to come. And then you'll be what? You'll be returned to who? To عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ shahada, The one who knows the seen and the unseen. And he will inform you of what you used to do. This young boy, he kept reciting this verse and of course he, he, he understood the verse. And yani, that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that, that reflection on I'm going to leave this earth one day and I'm going to have to stand in front of Allah and I'm going to have to answer for everything that I've done. That obviously hit him and that was impactful. And subhanAllah, you know, this 17 or 18 year old young boy, it was maybe two or three weeks after that, that he actually passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un It was a Friday I believe he went with his friends to the sea and they went to, to go do some swimming and he actually drowned. And just a few weeks before he's writing, reciting this verse and he's crying and he's crying thinking about that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And death my dear brothers and sisters as we all know is something that's inevitable. Kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut That death, every single one of us will taste death. Each and every one of us um, is going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes, you know, we like to put it at the back of our mind. You know, we don't, we don't really want to think about it. But when you reflect that, you, you think, what is life? In all honesty, you know, what is this life, subhanAllah? You're here for a number of years. Um, what's it all about? Where are we going? What, what's awaiting us? You know, these are things that sometimes we need to reflect on. You know, sometimes one of our teachers, he would say that I, I reflect on what's my first night going to be like in the grave? That first night when I'm in the grave, what's that going to be like? Have I prepared for it? You know, what state am I going back to? If I was to die tomorrow, what's my state with Allah? That's a question that we should all reflect on. If I was to go tomorrow, what would my state be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I mean, what are my chances with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course we know Allah is Ar-Rahman, He's Ar-Rahim. But what have I done? What have I put forward? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And death is something that can come at any time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَلَيْ يَخِرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ جَلُهَا 
That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you know your time comes, it can't be delayed. It can't be put forward, it can't be put back. Every single one of us has an allotted time that we're going to depart this dunya. There's no changing that. Yes, and no, nobody knows when that time is. None of us actually know that we're going to leave in five years time, ten years time, when we're going to leave. There's no guarantee. Yes, but we all know that one day we're going to have to make that journey. And none of us know, as Allah says, in which land we're going to die either. Yes, you don't know, are you going to die? You know, subhanAllah, people, they buy their own plot. Yeah, I've got my plot in uh, Million Cemetery ready for me. You don't know where you're going to die, subhanAllah. How many, uh, uh, how many individuals that we know traveled to different countries and passed away in those countries? Yes, and are buried in those countries. These are things that, wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, we should reflect on because, you know, as time passes by, you know, and time itself, you know, today is what, the 28th night of Ramadan. Think about that for a moment. It just seemed like yesterday we were getting together for the first night of Ramadan. Where's the last month gone? You know, where has the, you know, time itself is just flying. Yes, it's flying. And again, I came across uh, a post that I put on a number of years ago. It was March time, I think it was like 2016 or something. And um, I went to perform an Ika, and I've told this story before, at Al Ma'idah. And uh, when I, you know, when I uh, entered the, the building, I was waiting outside the main entrance. And the brother of the, the sister that was getting married, he came to me and he said that, um, you know, give us five minutes, my, my uh, father-in-law, or my, my wife's, sorry, my sister's father-in-law um, wants to welcome everybody. Okay, so give us five minutes and then he wants you to start with reciting the Qur'an. Okay, and then do the nikah. So I said, fine. So I was waiting outside. Um, I hear, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, and then I hear people screaming. And I go inside to see what's happened and he's collapsed on stage. And this is the father of who? of the, the boy that was about to get married. Okay, the father of the boy who's about to get married, he's on stage, he's welcoming his guests, he's saying Bismillah, and all of a sudden he collapses. The ambulance arrives, 20 minutes, they're trying different things, they eventually take him away. And then around half an hour after that, we got the news that Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Raji'un, the father had passed away. And I was thinking that SubhanAllah, you know, his last moments, what were his last moments? He's standing in front of all of his loved ones, his son's about to get married, and the last thing maybe in his mind is that he's going to die. He never woke up that morning thinking this is going to be my last day. Who does that? And it's the happiest day of your life. But as I said, when your time is appointed, you can't change it. That was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that time has been appointed, nothing can change it. I mean, how many young people have we seen die? Sometimes we think we've got many years ahead of us. But how many young people have we seen die? In this community, I remember a number of years ago, a brother called Munib. Munib, that some of you will remember. Um, Munib from Glen Eagles. Yes, his sister was getting married in Nawab. The sister got married. They dropped her off. Yes, at the hotel. Munib with his couple of friends. The other two that passed away. One was called Hamza Iqbal and one was called Hamza Gujar. Maharoon by his nephew. And what were they doing late at night? They were in an Audi S5. The driver near Wally Range, he driving fast, lost control, crashed. Three of them died. All under 24. Young, and again, what were they thinking? SubhanAllah, they just come from a wedding. The last thing maybe on their mind was that this is going to be you know, our last day on earth. But that's when, when the time is written, and none of us know, so don't ever think that oh, I've got many years ahead. I'm going to live until I'm 70 or 80. You don't know, I don't know. How many of us are going to reach the end of Ramadan? How many, how many of us will be here next Ramadan? And even if you do live till 80, even if you live till 80, and you look back, you're going to think, where's my life gone? I remember Uncle Afzal, rahimahullah. Yes, one of the pillars of our community in our old masjid. I remember when he was in his 70s, he would say to me, you know, I'd sit with him and he would say to me, son, I don't know where my life's gone. 70 odd years, I don't know, it's like a blink of an eye. And we can all reflect on that ourselves. If you think about where's the last 20 years gone? Where's the last 15 years gone? It's just flown by. Yes, and before you know it, subhanAllah, you, if you live to, to, to see 70 or 80, again it's going to seem like what? That it's just gone in the blink of an eye. So the question really is, you know, what are we doing to prepare? When you look at the Prophet wasallam and the companions, they lived very um, akhirah-focused lives. They were people who were focused on what's to come. 
It's that's not to say that they were they didn't enjoy the dunya or they didn't take part in the dunya. Of course they did. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ worked, he had a family, the companions, many of them had businesses. Yes, we always share the story of Abdurrahman ibn Awf, who by today's standards was a millionaire. But he would, wouldn't miss Salah in the first saf. Uthman ibn Affan, again by today's standards, was a millionaire. Yes, so they were busy in business, they were busy in the, in the dunya, but that didn't distract them from what? The ultimate goal, the ultimate aim of what preparing for what's to come. And they utilized what Allah had given them for the benefit of the Ummah. When the Ummah was in need after Tabuk, who came? It was Uthman, because Uthman had the ability to support the Muslims. So the point being, my dear brothers and sisters, is what is that we, we, we need to check ourselves every now and then that we're not becoming consumed by the dunya. dunya illa mata'al ghurur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that what is this worldly life except a deceiving enjoyment? That's what the life is. Don't think that you know this is the be all and end all. Don't delude yourself into thinking that that there's nothing after this. We have to prepare for what's after. That's the ultimate goal of a Muslim, is that we prepare for what's to come. But the nature of the dunya is what? The nature of shaitan is, is going to distract you and I. The nature of the dunya is what? It's going to pull us more and more yes, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the famous parable I've shared many times before, but again, it's beautiful to reflect on because it, it just... Um, and it's beautiful. Imam Ghazali, rahimullah, when he talks about uh, the man in the jungle, and this man is walking in the jungle, he looks behind him, and what does he see running towards him? Who can remind me? He sees a lion running towards him. So what does he do? He starts to run. He wants to get away from the lion. Okay, so he's running, and then he comes across a well, so he jumps into the well. He wants to get away. And as he jumps into the well, he's falling down the well, he grabs onto a rope. There was a rope there. So he grabs onto that rope. Yes, and now he breathes a sigh of relief. He looks up and that lion is waiting. Yes, the lion is looking down at him and he's holding onto the rope. And then when he looks down, he sees a snake with its, white, its uh, mouth wide open. Subhanallah, above is the lion, below is the snake. And what's he got? He's only got this rope. That's the only thing he's holding onto. And then he sees a white mouse and a black mouse and they start to nibble away at the rope. Okay, they start to nibble away at the rope. So that one thing that he's holding onto is getting shorter and shorter. Then he looks in front of him and he sees a honeycomb. He puts his finger on the honey and he tastes that honey. And for that split second, the sweetness of the honey, it made him forget about everything. It made him forget about the lion, it made him forget about the snake, it made him forget about the rope getting shorter and shorter. Why? Because he, and he was consumed by the sweetness of the honey. He goes on to explain, what is this? What is all of this? Yani lion, snake, honey, blah, blah, blah. What is it? He explains, he says, the lion represents what? Death. That we're all running away from death. And death is on our back. And he is chasing us. We're all, all trying to get away from it. He said the rope represents life. We're all clinging on to life. We don't want to let go of life. What does the snake represent? The grave. Each and every one of us has a grave awaiting our arrival. I have a grave awaiting my arrival. You have a grave awaiting your arrival. He says, what does the white mouse and the black mouse represent? They represent the night and the day. The night and the day are constantly nibbling away at what? At, the, at our, our life. Yes, the rope is the life, remember? The night and day is nibbling away, it's getting shorter and shorter. What does the honey represent? He says the honey represents, the sweetness of the honey represents the dunya. We taste the dunya and it makes us forget about everything. We forget about death, we forget about the grave, we forget about how our life is getting shorter and shorter. How true is that? And you just reflect on how true that is. And we become unfortunately so consumed by the dunya that we forget about what's to come. But the Muslim is the one who constantly reminds himself that I have something to prepare for. I have something that I need to get ready for. And look, the, the purpose of this reminder isn't that we get doom and gloom and think, oh, you know, we're all going to die and let's just now give up. And No, subhanAllah, the purpose of the reminder is, is to remind myself and yourselves that there's something we have to prepare for. And we must be living purpose-driven lives. Don't live a life you know, where you're just, um, you know, you're just sleepwalking through it. Day comes, day passes by, week, month, year, and there's no real direction. We don't know what we're doing with our lives. It's just passing by, passing by, passing by. That's not the Muslim. The Muslim is the one who's conscious of every day, conscious of every week, is trying to get better, trying to get closer to Allah, trying to do more. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to live purpose-driven lives, that we have a purpose behind our existence, a purpose behind our living, that we leave behind a legacy. You know, when you go, what is it you want to leave behind? And what's your mark? 
What is it that you want to be known for? That this person, he lived a life in, in obedience to Allah. This person did something for the Ummah. When you look at the people like you know, Ali Banat, he was diagnosed with cancer and he said it was a gift. Why? Because he changed his life around. And what did he leave? He left an impact. Edi, you know, when you read the story of, of Edi, the one who set up Edi Foundation, he left an impact. So these are people that we should look at and, and gain inspiration from. That we want to do something, leave something behind. Live a purpose-driven life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us tawfiq. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to be of those who utilize the dunya for the akhirah. Yes, and not be consumed by the dunya. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.